Don't commit any sins under the pretext of da'wah. Some people fool themselves. They fool themselves because you can't fool Allah. They will justify a stance or a setting that they're in, a sinful setting that they're in, by crying and saying da'wah. Don't be caught, for example, sitting at a table with alcohol, where alcohol is being roamed around, passed around, and say, Wallahi, I'm giving these people da'wah. When a case like that was presented to Umar bin Khattab, he started with lashing the people, he ordered the lashing of the people who were not drinking before those who were drinking. Some of them said, we're fasting Umar. He said, with them start. Don't be caught among those who, a man, a brother, among women, you see him in a setting where women are properly dressed, and then he'll tell you, I'm giving da'wah. Don't be caught with a sister alone and say, Wallahi, I'm teaching her Quran. Uh, don't have those uh, tights or the tight jeans and that which uh, they call today a scarf or hijab, they call, uh, they call today a hijab actually, uh, more, looking more like someone who's trying to model. Women improperly dressed, mixing and mingling at its peak. And women with all that which is prohibited for another foreign man to see, they're there in that setting. You ask a brother who you presume is righteous, what were you there doing? Wallah da'wah. Your da'wah is to talk people in a setting like that, out of that sin. If you can't, then you need to walk away. However, when sins become widespread, where many are involved, and it's popular, even though it's not the majority, and it's popular, then it affects everyone. When it's popular, it affects everyone. 700 with the best man to walk on the face of the earth, get defeated for the minor mistake of less than 50. Less than 50. The entire Muslim Ummah back then, gets defeated because it's the ummah there. When evil is widespread, destruction and defeat awaits this ummah. They're more shameful in their mixing, in their mingling, in the way the women are dressed, in the improper dressing, than the enemies that we are facing. Umran ibn Hussain, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he narrated that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, fi hathi al-umma khasfun wa maskhun wa qadf. Fi hathi al-umma khasfun ومسخ وقذف قال رجل من المسلمين يا رسول الله متى ذلك قال رجل من المسلمين متى ذلك يا رسول الله قال إذا ظهرت القينات والمعازف إذا ظهرت القينات والمعازف وشربت الخمر in Sunan al-Tirmidhi it's an authentic hadith the point of this hadith is that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said there will be مسخ in this ummah there will be مسخ in this ummah What's masq? Al-Mannawi defines masq as tahweel al-sura ila akbah minha aw masq al-qulub aw qalb al-khilqa min shay'in ila shay'in What does that mean? Masq, there's going to be masq at the end of time, at some time. And the Sahaba asked, when will it be? What's masq? Before we get to that, the other points of the hadith. It can be real change of human into, for example, Pigs and donkeys, like another hadith specified. This one doesn't specify, but it could be real. A human being changed to the form of a pig and a donkey. It could be the changing of the heart and the mind. You go talk to someone, you think you're talking to a human being, but you're really not talking to a human being. Wallah, ya akhi, this is haram. Are you talking, you're in, uh, you're in the east and he's in the west. It's not like you're not talking to a human being. It could be that as well. It could be a real change and it could be a heart and a mind change. And then uh, he said, khasfun wa masq. And then there's going to be khasf. Uh, the next one is khasf. And that's al ghawr fil ard. There will be earthquakes. The earth will open and swallow people. That is khas. That's the second one. And then there's going to be the third one that the Prophet said that will be qadh. And qadh is hijara. Throwing or the dropping of stones from the sky. Like that which happened, for example, to the people of the elephant. Abra and the people of the elephant in, in Surah Al Fil. Uh, so when does that happen? When those three, three things happen? The Sahaba asked, when does that happen? He said, when the qayyinat in ma'azif are widespread. What are they? What are the qayyinat and what are the ma'azif? Qayyinat is entertainers, the singers. The singers that sing and inspire you to do haram. And ma'azif are the instrument, uh, uh, instruments of the shaitan. More so in another hadith, the one by uh, Abi Amr, narrated by Abi Amr or Abu, Abu Malik. Sami'a uh, nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, la yakununna min ummat akwamun min ummati yastahillun al-hurra wal harira wal khamra wal ma'azif. From this ummah, from this ummah. This is not talking about the non-believers. This is talking about this ummah. The followers of this ummah. There will be some people who will consider illegal sex, illegal intercourse, 
adultery and fornication, they will do that. They will consider that. They will consider the wearing of silk. They will consider the drinking of alcohol and the musical instruments as lawful. They will consider it lawful by their acts possibly or clearly saying this is halal. And you see that today. Some of them will wake up. Allah wants to, the hadith wants to show you how smooth and swift the disaster of Allah is for such people. They will wake up overnight. Some of them are monkeys and swines. These are from this ummah. Some of them are monkeys and swines. And we describe what monkeys and swines. It could be real or it could be that their hearts and minds are like that. And they will be transferred into monkeys and swines until the judgment day. They will remain so until the judgment day. Meaning, when those matters occur, the matters that we said, that they will consider lawful. When those matters occur, and amongst them is usage, and lawful, considering lawful, the instruments of the shaitan. When those, uh, the, those, those, those matters occur, there will be a sudden and swift punishment. If, look at the other side. Look at the other side. These are the Muslims. These are the Muslims that will be transformed into apes and monkeys and swines. Why? Because of the mu musical instruments. The Quran also says about the opponents. What did he say about them? وَجَعَلَ مِنْهُمُ الْقِرَدَ وَالْخَنَازِيرَ Those who incurred the curse in the wrath of Allah. Those whom he transformed into monkeys and swines. Now this one, this verse is not pertaining to this ummah. This is pertaining to our opponents. Now the conclusion. The conclusion out of that. The first two hadith are about this ummah. The ayah is about the opponents. People will be transformed from both sides into apes and swines. I'm going to say it's widespread and no one can deny that. It's widespread when you can't even approach people and tell them this is haram and haram. Wallahi, they have communities here, they have clubs here that they sit and drink coffee and backbite and do all that which is prohibited. And possibly sometimes they invite a guy to lecture. They ask, what does he say? Before you invite him, what does he say about musical instruments? It's haram, don't bring him here. Wallahi, this, this has happened. Some of you here know this very well. When it becomes widespread, Allah holds everyone accountable. Us who don't engage in that and those who are in that. All of us are whole, held accountable. That's the shaitan playing with your mind. There's people who think they're doing righteous, and in, real, in reality, it's evil that they're doing. They think they're doing it under the pretext of da'wah, but in reality, it's not good what they're doing. You don't go those, to those places claiming da'wah. That's our point. You don't go to places of sin and claim da'wah unless you're there to stop it. The same scenario applies when, for example, you see a sister. You go visit, I go visit universities with improper hijab, what they call hijab. And uh, you ask, what, what, what is she, exactly is she doing? Oh, she's doing uh, da'wah table brother this week. You go da'wah in that manner. Uh, you have to know how to give da'wah. You don't engage in a sin in giving da'wah. The point of all this is that you don't mingle with sinners and cry da'wah.